Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, we can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem and this and that. One of the reasons why we don't have more women in politics in Nigeria is for as long as political meetings continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's really. disastrous for a president to, even to be unaware. unaware of the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy it's was a terrible, terrible. Like a terrible, <laughs> terrible strategy. strategy. Because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and quite frankly Nigeria has become in a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. No two advocacies are the same, which is why you're guaranteed a variety menu on today's edition. Welcome to The Advocate. Falasha Day is suddenly warmed up to things, and today is asking what may seem like a trick question, essentially. Is church good for you? Liberos is clear as to what is good for us. He spotlights the celebration and promotion of our local culture. Ekenya says that marriage unions can be a bedrock of selfish, imposed authority. That's hard hitting. Ronke is back. This time, she wants us to pay attention to a certain trendy 21st century skill known as collaboration. I have a very direct message to deliver as concerns our bother, our bother closure. I'm saying, shut them out after the break. Two months ago, Precisely on August 21st, the federal government ordered the closure of our western borders, slapping restriction on cross-border trade with our neighbors, especially the Republic of Benin. The reason? To curb rampant uh, smuggling activities and protect our economy. This move has created a ripple effect as far ashore as the port of Baltimore, Thailand, and India. Officially, 13% of Brit uh, Benin's total export volume is to Nigeria. But according to the World Bank information trade between the two countries account for 20% of Benin's GDP. So one would wonder, what exactly does Benin produce or manufacture and export to Nigeria? The answer is Benin produces nothing of her own. All she does is import items such as frozen foods, used clothes, used vehicles and rice, and then re-export to Nigeria illegally via smuggling. This isn't all. In the reverse trade, Petrol is being smuggled out on a large scale. So in essence, Nigeria pays subsidy for petrol that Beninois consume. This economic sabotage should not continue, and it is the reason why I wholeheartedly support the closure of the borders until such a time that the government of Benin will control illicit trade across its borders. However, the federal government must find ways to address the attendant effect of border closure rising food prices, especially rice, streamline and simplify clearing process at our seaport, address our port transportation system so that agri-produce can move easily within the country. Trade with a neighbor is essential, they say, but we must also be mindful of that between 10 and 20% of Nigeria, Nigeria's manufactured goods are sold to other countries in West Africa with many of these items such as pasta and cosmetics exported through small sellers who travel around the region. So while it is commendable for government to curb smuggling activities, it, is also, it must also be mindful not to distort the legal cross-border trade. Yeah, um, I, I like the fact that um, you talked about, uh, yeah, close, close the border but the essence of closing the border should be to address the business. And um, is government addressing that issue? Or are we just going to leave the border, you know, perpetually closed? Because also, I, I, like, I also like the fact that you talked about, you know, the businesses, exports from this country. Because when you close to those coming in, you close to those going out. Going out and also you have loads of trucks, you know, from the Nigerian side, all you know, at the border and those coming from Benin. And then another thing for me, lastly on this, is the fact that over time, you hear government admit that our borders are porous, our borders are porous, mm -hmm. and there are illegal routes everywhere. Mm -hmm. And you have 
people, if you go to the Nigerian border, border between the Benin Republic, you have all sorts. And yet these same borders, borders are porous. And there is no solution to the problem apart from you know, closing it and then the attendant effect. If the borders were not porous, and also, like you also said, if the cost of importing through our seaports you know, are not that onerous, people won't go to Benin Republic. So all of these, for me, I think are issues need government to need to address. While, you know, this should be a temporary measure, but, you know, for a lasting solution, you need to address all the yeah. issues raised. I mean, just so to that tomorrow another government won't come. Because remember, in 1984, we did this. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, just to piggyback on what, I mean, I'm sure you also are mindful of yeah. the same thing. Yeah. You know, we seem to act sometimes in a way that doesn't show that we've thought things through. Even the issue of people whose goods are left at the border, it, it looks like they didn't tell people, they didn't no, give no, them there was no enough notice. So no, there you have people no with legitimate goods there, stocked up, you know, spoiling and, you know, just being destroyed for lack of information. They said had they given them information maybe a month in advance, they would not have gone and gone through those processes. I just want to also take issue slightly with the fact that you say Benin Republic uh, doesn't produce anything. <laughs> you know, they do produce raw cot cotton. And they export raw cotton and, and other goods, and maybe not, you know, gold amongst them. You know, yes, clearly they're part of the people that are taking advantage of our porous borders. And here we have up to 1,700 borders. Be because their How processes, are you going to even export, secure all those borders? The you know? export and import processes are simpler than mm. that of Nigeria, and so that's why people would rather import from them. through Benin. Yes, and because I don't want them to seem like they're the fall guys. I'm sure there are other people taking advantage, including Nigerians the, themselves, the, the, who the, are happily allowing our borders to that, remain that, that way. The problem the problem of Benin is they're complicit in all of this. So are Nigerians. Yes, yeah. but they have allowed this illegal trade to thrive because their economy depends on it. They make money for right. it. Yeah, absolutely. But it's time for us now to say no, enough is enough. Yeah, but the uh, Nigeria's interest. Is to say they wouldn't succeed if Nigerians weren't also party to that. Yeah, so now, uh, well. Illicit trading. So Nigerians yes. Are so also yes. Yes. They all part. Yeah. Of course, the Nigerians that bring the to uh, Tokumbo cars from Baltimore and everywhere <laughs> drive through illegal <laughs> routes. Yes, they do. The, the problem here is that yes, there are a whole lot of problems as I yeah. mentioned, but I mean we have to start from somewhere. Yes. Yeah, this it's, 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 from it's a somewhere. national emergency. Yes. We were encouraging rice farmers, and yet. It, it, it's starting uh, from somewhere. Imagine in 1979, 1980, 81, 82, we're buying new brand new cars. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side, 30, 30 something years down the line, we are buying used cars. Struggle we are buying used clothes. <laughs> we are buying backwards. used everything. Mm. And, and so, and that's one of the reasons also why these people, they, it's an opportunity for them. Yeah. It's an opportunity. But right? I guess the question is. 30 years down the line, why are we buying used cars mm. and used clothes? It's about our economy. It's about economy. It? I think, say, Andrew, that as much as I agree with you about um, the issues, I feel that the question we need to be asking the government very robustly is how are they planning to solve the issues and how are they going to address the root causes? Because that's, that, that is the main issue. Closing the borders for the sake of closing the borders without dealing with the root issues is not going to solve the problem. And I think it's slightly unfair, as Akena said, to kind of place the blame with the I'm Republic of Benin because at the end of the day, we are very complicit. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I think we're just I, Africans, I, and both sides are guilty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so true. That's just the no, corruption I, lies both at Benin Republic and, and Nigeria. Nigeria. Yeah. I, so I think once we start to deal with those issues of regarding corruption, yeah, there's there's also I think a, a very silent political angle to it as well. Okay. Um, there are some Nigerian businesses who suffered in Republic of Benin, like Dongote, he's okay. had a serious okay. outing there, at the, um, Globalcom, they've had very serious outing. So why should we continue to take the exactly from them and, and you would we'll allow suffer benefits. from this. Do you understand? Mm. So from when you look at it holistically, you know, we should not allow this illegal trade. No. To, no, but to but, but like what really you're saying, which I'm still saying, right. we, should, we should follow up closing borders. I the, hope we the, are. The issue is the things you listed this, there. Yes, this, so those are the things. This import Make import. sure that the uh, import uh, channels are streamlined. Yes. So clearing your goods should not take, like Ghana, Eternity. 48 hours. Yeah. Your goods are out. Yeah, that's, that's you know? where so I have a concern. These goods are imported through Benin Republic and the duties are paid to Benin Republic. Yes. So if you now allow them to pass through your borders into your country, you don't need to blame Benin Republic for allowing goods come through their country. 
they collect charges. They streamline their processes. Yes, they plan and it, so it works for them. It works for them. And so it is at the point of entry your country. It's not their business how it enters your country. It is your business to protect. So that's what we're doing now, addressing that. We we're not addressing it. We're addressing it. Well, now we, are now we have we're addressing, we have, it. We're addressing it. We have all in the past you have just uh, customs at the border. Yes. Now we have the army, we have the... Because we have closed the border. Yes. When we open sure. it. So now we need to understand where the leakage is. Every day, social media is daunted with pictures of seized items from all of those routes. No, so we now we're rice. identifying we those areas. Because we all know the rice situation. We're eating rice now. Right. Now the borders are closed. Our local farmers are not being encouraged to produce quality rice because we're still buying inferior rice at a higher price. Right. So, you know, when they open borders, some of us will quickly rush back to the imported rice. To imported rice. <laughs> well, establishing clear boundaries can be a good foundation to developing productive relationships. Falashade queries what she sees as a not-so-productive social interaction after the break. Sometimes no one wants to speak out because it would be unpopular to do so. But I've got a question today. Is church bad for your overall well-being? Some will say yes, some will say no. Nigeria is said to have the largest Christian population in Africa with an estimated 80 million individuals affiliating themselves with Christianity. In addition to the more orthodox forms of Christianity, there has been an explosion of Pentecostal churches. Apparently, there are a staggering 5,000 different Pentecostal denominations in this nation. In the days of the late renowned Nigerian musician Fela, it was to quote the lyrics of one of his popular anthems, Suffer, Suffer for World, Enjoy for Heaven. Not so in this day. Many Pentecostal churches preach messages with a focus on worldly wealth being a measure of spiritual blessing. I am genuinely asking, are churches, and particularly Pentecostal churches, good for your overall well-being? Take the weekly calendar of most of these churches. Many of them have daily meetings, and the expectation of the congregation is daily attendance. But I ask, if you work and have a family, when do you have physical rest? And when do you spend quality time with your family? And if you don't work, how on earth will you secure a job if you spend most of your waking hours in church? I strongly believe in prayer, and I have a very strong faith. But after you pray, you also need to act. Praying in of itself will not afford you the skills required to make you employable. Which brings me to my next point. How many of these churches, especially mega churches, generally teach life skills which will foster healthy independence and sustainability? And why are these churches not providing services such as healthcare and education at little or no cost to those who have limited resources? It's surely needed in a nation where the annual education budget is a paltry 5 to 6% of the national cake. Churches should promote physical and mental well-being. They should partner with health professionals to provide health promotion for their members. And yes, actually, I will go there. Using gimmicks to encourage church members to part with money they can ill afford is immoral. Even if an individual gets a windfall, last time I checked, it required wisdom not only to gain wealth, but to sustain it too. Prudence too is needed. And what can I say about other forms of abuse in church? Naming no names today, don't want to get myself in trouble again, but churches need to be a place of sanctuary for women of all ages, and not a place where vulnerability is exploited. And dear Minister of God, I did say dear, unless you have undertaken a specific mental health training, you are not qualified to manage mental illness. I'll say it again, you Minister of God, are not qualified to manage mental illness. There is a need for upskilling, but until such a time, please acknowledge the limits of your knowledge and encourage members of your congregation to seek appropriate help. Of course there are benefits to having a faith. I am not knocking a belief in God or faith, but many of our churches in their current form, are they really good for our overall well-being? I am just not so sure. So what do you think? 
I, I initially I didn't want to be the one <laughs> to fire the first salvo <laughs> because for well, saving it's already poisoned. Fire the first shot. Yeah. Fire, the first shot. Yeah, fire it. Church. What is church? Church is, is it the building or the people? So we need to first of all differentiate. Because the church, according to the Bible, is the people. It's not the building we gather in. So if I gather with five of you in the name of Jesus, it's a church already. Okay. So that so means we're in church now. We're in church. If we're gathered in the name of God. <laughs> so really, when, this abuse is never going to go away. Because religion is the opium of the masses. They need it. It's learned helplessness. So parenting, this is where it starts. Because they will continue to abuse children. People need it. And there's poverty. So people will go there, they will tell them lies, and they need to hear these lies. But, but two, two things for me. Uh, first and foremost, I want to I disagree with that statistics of 80 million Nigeria. Ale, um, you know, being why, 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 one. why do you disagree? That's because the statistics are. Time. I would, um, statistics are 47.5 percent of of 200. Well, of or, 200. Of 160 okay, you, or one, on 200. You are so, querying my mathematics. Uh, so, I'm not a mathematician. <laughs> I'm a psychiatrist. So that is why I disagree. Okay, okay. So secondly, <laughs> secondly, I. I I, you talked about uh, abuse will always be there. For me, and that's why there is government. That's why there are regulations, regulatory body. You, so you regulate activities. And that's why we all individually submitted our individual rights for a, a re in return protection you know, of, of our collective rights. And so that's why there should be regulations. Here we don't want churches or religious body to be regulated. They should be regulated. Because what you have is like what I call it for one eye packaging. You package your mugu, create fear around him, and then open a small narrow opening that leads them to you as the solution provider. That's what our religious body, churches and monks are gradually turning to, or have turned to churches especially. And that's why somebody will have a mental illness rather than visit a hospital. He will first visit the pastor because it's true. And, uh, because yeah, that's why. That's why. I'm, that's why I'm saying that wrong care. The education is not there. That is why I'm saying that the, so the regulation government need to regulate these things. So there the need, need to be education. Also, take for example, why should somebody take a mental case to a church? That church. Should be penalized. No, no, that's going too far. No, we're not going too far. What, you're, what, you're, what, you're, what, you're, what, what <laughs> is recommending is mm. not is not new. Mm. They've yes. done it in one. Yes, okay. you know, and they've, they've no, I would, seen, I agree they've, with seen him, they've seen that uh, you know um, religion as it's been practiced now is abused because of you know the level of awareness yes. and you know level of poverty and all of that. So there's some level of regulation that you know they have applied in that place and we can you know borrow from the wisdom and that regulation and see what is happening what is happening in uh, is Rwanda today you know religion it's it's you know it's a very delicate topic today that people just don't want to talk about it mm. they just want yeah. This is a don't go there. Because it's their drug. They need it. They need, want it. I actually yeah, I I I I I I say, say something before. To add, to add so that you can react. Okay. Because, and please, uh, I need to get in there. On this, on this same issue, to add to what you have just said, mm. you, you find out that if the responsibility of government is to protect people, vulnerable people, so why do you now leave them to the dictate of somebody who also is not properly trained to manage what he is managing? Okay. okay, let me come in. I think you've made your point. So. I think that in my own, my own, do you say, constraint in all of this, not because I can't borrow from everything everyone has said, is that you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Now, because you have people who abuse work. You know we have workaholics. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that the work in itself is to blame. So, so I come, let me, let me, let me get there, my brother. Let me get there. So nobody regulates a workaholic. If you want to sleep here seven days a week, it's your choice. So the fact is, there are lots of things we abuse in life. It's up to you to determine. I go to church. I know how much time I'll spend. Just matter how much you poach me and beg me to be a worker and call me for meetings. I choose how much. So I, this is where I maybe go towards um, uh, what Rukia is saying. I'm coming now. You can, you, you, I need to uh, stay with my flow. Mm -hmm. So where, what I'm saying is that human beings need to be informed, educated, which is what I think exactly. this advocacy is doing. That's that these men are not gods. But likewise, this is where I bring the balance in. Doctors too are not gods. I can choose to go to a church to pray for my mentally ill child. It's my choice. After all, when Jesus walked the earth, healing, he healed all manner of diseases. So even the doctors themselves, if they're honest, they will recognize that there are things that are beyond their own capacity. And that's where the God factor, I'm coming. I still need to land that point. You know, I'm on the flow here. So, so ultimately, we need to humble ourselves a little bit and say, the pastors are not 
and not to be demonized. Yes, they're, they're pastors, they're Pentecostal churches that are abusing their own you know, capacity. But it doesn't mean that they're outside their remit to administer healing to someone. If I bring my child, that's my choice. So you don't necessarily have to tell me oh, okay. by the yeah. law that I so can't that's do that. I I just wanted, <laughs> Can I just come yeah. in now? Mm. So I think what, there are a couple of things we've read. The first thing is about governance. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board, whether it's in churches or we just talked about borders and so many other issues that we've raised last week and this week and beyond. I think that in a, in a proper um, um, setup, churches should be subject to a degree of governance. That's the first thing. And you use the issue about time and being a workaholic. I'm based in UK, as you know. And there is governance about how many hours a week the maximum you can work. Yeah. And at least, at the very least, if you decide to work above the recommended hours, you have to sign the contract as an opt-out. So at least you cannot say that you're not aware of the um, challenges and maybe the risk to overworking. I think the challenge here, again, I believe in prayer. I said it, and I have a strong faith. But as my children would say, people need to keep in their line. I think that as a pastor, if somebody is brought to you with a mental health issue and you know you don't have the competency, you should be brave enough to sign post. I think the issue That's here is, is that a lot of pastors see health professionals and other professionals as in competition with them. Well, it had to be said, so I opted to be the one to say it. Mm -hmm. I guess because I'm jumping on a plane next week back to London. <laughs> After the break, Libras gives voice to a certain neglected but newsworthy aspect of our national development. You're watching The Advocate on Plus TV Africa. We cry for a revolution, and yet the seed of transformation has scattered around us. According to Sir Walter Rodney, African had no history until the advent of the European. But if we believe that history is a way of a life of a people, and African had people who had a way of life before the advent of the European, then African had a rich history and culture before the coming of the European. Welcome to Buduku, the metaphor for Nigerian cultural renaissance, a pathway to unlocking the rich history and cultural heritage of the black man. One disposition common to the Igbos worldwide is the inherent desire to reconnect to their roots and refresh their filial connection during the Utah period. Brothers and sisters from far and wide come home to rekindle the king spirit. Despite the opportunity of this life-sustaining, bonding annual gathering, various state governments in Nigeria, in this eastern state, have failed to seize the opportunity of the moment to showcase their rich culture by promoting festivals and cultural carnivals that will encourage tourism migrants. Where the state government have failed, the Buduku community has chosen to stand tall by using the opportunity of Utah season and the hope coming of their kings and kin to showcase and harness the cultural opportunities the community has to offer. Why borrowing a little from today to tell the story of their yesterday to their children for the sustenance of generations of tomorrow. The town of Buduku is a charming, lovely community located in Idi Aton North local government area of Imo State and is home to a lot of diligent, enthusiastic people with notable distinguished ladies and gentlemen. The event, which is tagged Obuduku Day, where culture meets modernity, under the leadership of Ben Obidegu, an accomplished lawyer, showcases an array of entertainment activities, such as the glamorous Obuduku Cultural Festival, masquerade display, traditional Igbo dance competition, local wrestling competition, akin to that described by Chinua Achebe in Things Fall Apart, Things Fall Apart, rather, the Ugebe Obuduku Maiden Beauty Pageants, parade of royalty and other side attractions. In this era of unemployment, insecurity, and youth restiveness, various states can use such traditional festivals to harness potentials, provide employment, drive tourism, while showcasing the rich cultural heritage of Nigeria in a global world where our culture is gradually giving way for anything West. Who knows? As Yuri Hedima won of Igbo land. Anyway, the title I gave myself. Just like the Calabar Carnival, when it first started, I might just be spending my Christmas in Obuduku this year instead of a family vacation abroad, maybe going to meet uh, Fola Shade. <laughs> if you can grow our culture, we can grow our country. I was already praising you, I was getting carried away. <laughs> yes, one. No, you must pronounce it very well. One. one. Mm. Yes. I'm, I'm looking it's forward so to Obuduku yeah. visit. Yes, so Obuduku. Obuduku. As, as you have painted it. Um, I, I completely disagree with. Um, 
Walter Rodman. Rodney. Okay. That, Don't um, mind him. Africa's uh, had no history. Those, yes. We had no history. We're That's a big lie. Mm. In fact, uh, Africans colonized the Euro Europeans, the okay. Moors. You know, and incidentally, they're from West Africa, Malians. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. You know, so we had this history. And that's the mistake we're making. As long as we allow people to tell our story, yeah. they'll keep depriving us. Yeah. They start with little things, like associating black with bad things, yeah. and white with good. So yeah. constantly you think, oh, because I'm black, I can't do anything mm. good. Mm. Or black, you know, it's... So it just, it, it, it digs deep into our psyche that now we want to be like them. Mm. And we lose value. We, we lose all, all the culture, heritage, the beautiful yeah. heritage we yeah. have. You know, Africa, Nigeria is blessed it with... Is. Nigeria rich culture that we're not harnessing the at potential all. at all. But do we look at the outfit it? you wore today, you know? Yeah. The Uyghurs <laughs> want to look like you. Yes, yes. You know? So we, why can't we celebrate it? Yeah, you know? I think so, we, people sorry, really before want you... No, let's be honest. Yeah. Uh, do we really want it? We want to be westernized. <laughs> The typical home now speaks English in their home. I think the only people that now do it that I know, I lived in the north for 20 F something years, and houses always, anywhere they go, in London, Hata. America, that's speaking, just like the Chinese. Mm -hmm. Nigerians are not speaking the language anymore. It's always English, in fact, speaking with an, an accent, mm -hmm. you know. Hey, yo, yo. We, don't, we don't want to maintain our culture. We are ashamed to even say this. I mean, if, in our school, for example, at Lepoche, the children, when we introduce them to yeah, Yoruba yeah, languages. Lepoche now, that's why. No, 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 it's, it's, it's posh, posh, but still, posh. We, we promote culture. Okay. And when we start to even tell them, say, Eka Aroma, they start giggling and laughing when we tell them to prostrate that. It's new to them. Mm. So what are parents doing in the home? I'm a very firm believer that most of the issues we even have in this country starts in the home. Yeah. We don't even want to tell our children the right way to greet anymore. Mm. You know, it's uncool to speak like this. It's uncool to do that. So now telling them to, um, it's that to same, start doing obodu. It's that same like, what's mentality. Obodu, um, that's what they're <laughs> no, doing together. It, it, no, sorry, what you have to sit back. Let's, let's, no, let's quickly, dissect no. your cake. Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> He's coming. I, I want to, I agree with both of you, mm. and I want to take it a step, step further. Okay. I don't I think to in there. Nigeria that we there really have a concept about tourism. I went to Zanzibar a couple of years ago. Mm. It's such a small country, East Africa, for those whose geography is like... Most people have heard of Zanzibar. <laughs> I have to confess that when my daughter said, I want to go to Zanzibar for her, her it was a, a Lama um, birthday, I had to go and check my, um, my map. Wow. I wasn't quite Where sure. Is it? But anyway, everybody didn't hear that. But I was really struck by a number of things. One, even though it's a very small country, they have really harnessed all that they have. And tourism actually is their main, can I say? Stay. Mainstay in terms of um, finance and resource generation. Tanzania. Yeah, and Zanzibar. Yeah. Um, one of the things I was struck by was it was very safe. You know, they, 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 they actually were very proud to tell us. We were three young, three women. I wanted to say young. I'm not so young. No, no, you're young. Three, what three, is it? Three women traveling, in, traveling alone. Mm. And they were very keen to let us know that it was safe to go out any time of the night. And it really was. Mm. And they had really harnessed their tourism. And I stood there at one point and I was really sad. And I thought about my country. And I thought, we have so much, as, to, we offer. Have so much to offer, but we have when not harnessed it. No, no. But of course, there are other things we have to look at, isn't it? Like security and safety. Yeah. If you, you know. harness them, you fight those other ones. Yeah. You have to deal with those yeah. ones first. Yes. Uh, because at the end of the day, the reality is, even in my own country, I wouldn't feel very comfortable going out at 2 well, o'clock in the morning. Let me borrow from what Libros just said. If you harness them, then those are... Because I'm, we had a certain former governor of Calabar State. Well, uh, Cross River. Duke. Sorry, Cross River. Mm -hmm. Donald Duke, who was saying that actually he made his focus tourism. And by making his focus tourism, because it was like a one-stone traps all, yeah. mm -hmm. suddenly he knows that if he does tourism, he'll deal with unemployment, he'll yep. deal with, because suddenly you want to make your house tidy if you want to invite mm -hmm. people into it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just jumping across to what uh, Ronke was saying about culture, part of what I was reflecting on when I looked at the Obuduku story, it's, it's actually quite remarkable. They are thinking, they're thinking about what they're doing. So they have, one year they have, they're appealing to the young people, next year they're appealing to people with, you know, older people, they have themes to try and involve everybody in the conversation around mm. Obuduku. So the young, if you go to their sites, the young want to identify with Obuduku, the old want to identify. So they're, they're using their brain and they're thinking, how do we keep this conversation current? So the kind of culture I'm interested in is one that is engaging people. You're not trying to say, oh, let's go back to the good old days. You're, you're appreciating that we're not where we were, but we want to also carry along the things that represent what we had. So I don't want to keep flogging people and saying, speak this language, but let them appreciate the language. You have to find that, a way of making it attractive. That's where the, that's the where what I wanted to add. That's where the, the problem is. You, you find that, that, that this mentality of African had no history before we came. Mm -hmm. and, and so we are giving you history. 
And, and so that curriculum was you know, pushed down, and then we expanded the narrative. And so, to that extent, we're still keeping that narrative. That is why, you know, some people will be, you know, be comfortable to teach their children foreign language. We talked about foreign religion. Mm -hmm. You know, every other thing African is bad. It's their fake gods. They are fake religion. You know, but you suddenly discover that these same people that once came to tell you that yours is not good, they are learning your trade. They are learning your culture. They are learning your, your way of life. And, and so, why don't you find a way? of harnessing this your culture, promote it, let people know that it's safe to practice. If the Jews did, did not export religion to, to the rest of the world, today to. we will be talking about <laughs> Jesus Christ and all of that. So, so in the same way, like we that. really don't really want it. <laughs> That's think, about, uh, everything. think about about two years ago, the Ghana must go back. When it was in England, and I understand that Louis Vuitton bought it and rebranded it. Yeah. And then people, Nigerians went to and shops abroad and they started buying. That's what he well, said. What I'm saying because is, is I said, no, you, you borrow, that you, you, we have to you make it a take attractive. a culture. I agree. But I, do, do, do no, you won't want it until you, it's presented people, to you in a way. I am here now. I'm here dressed in this but attire. I, I think it's very much about the packaging. Yes. So let's talk about Afrobeats. I mean, Afrobeats is storming the world. Yes. And it is one avenue that I think that we have become very yes, successful in our fashion well, industry. And our fashion yeah. industry, where people want to buy. Mm. So I think it's about the packaging. I completely I, I, agree I, I, with I, I, you. I think and and to add, sorry, quickly, mm. look at before now, the way Seydou is dressed. It wasn't fashionable, but today it's been rebranded, and everybody wants to dress like this, including the Europeans. Yeah, like and so, like what we smart. need to do is that this is our <laughs> culture and tradition. Let us harness it, and you know, also promote it amongst ourselves first, so we understand the ideas, and then you know, take it out. Okay. Remember, remember Arugungu Festival before now. Yeah, For now, I, I was, we gradually will stop talking that, about it. You know, um, again, when we allow people to tell our story, we, and Unfortunately, we tell the bad stories. Yeah. We go out there, oh, Nigeria is horrible. Nigeria is this. We need to start projecting positive image for Nigeria. And that way would address all of those issues that we're talking about. Well, you have said it. We are certainly for progress and development on the advocates. Your feedback is a crucial part of our crusade. As concerns Nigerians, one of the wonders of the world, but Mike TV says, Madam Uche said my mind, and she hit the nail on the head. Bravo. On the same topic, Florence O.K. Allison says, well said, folks. I do hope that the good news will happen soon. AK4J247 says, the job of leaders, the elite of the society, is to lead the general populace towards a place of enlightenment, freedom, and actualization. It is for every privileged Nigeria to grow a pair and start direct action to bring the nation to its promised land. To catch up on previous broadcasts, go to www.plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. After the break, Ekene says, women know your place. She can't be serious, or can she? A lot of what we adopt as the norm has its roots in an unquestioned culture. On the heels of sensitization about the dignity of girls and women and the sex for grade scandal, I was intrigued when the other day I was engaged by some of my male colleagues. Ekene, one of them asked, what do you make of girls or young wives who cannot cook? It wasn't a jam question, as we like to say, essentially an open book exam. Expecting me to pass judgment on the imaginary lazy and self-indulgent young ladies who want to be looked after, but don't want to bring anything to the marriage union, they were surprised when instead I said it depended on each couple to work out what was important to them and that a wife is more than a cook. It's not like I completely am oblivious to where they might be coming from. Food matter no be small matter, <laughs> especially when it's capable of destroying homes. According to the National Bureau of Statistics, as at 2016 anyway, in Nigeria just 0.2% of men and 0.3% of women have sought for a divorce and well under 1% of couples admit to being separated. However, if public opinion is anything to go by, divorce is on the rise in Nigeria. Although misplaced ideologies contribute to what one article terms rings fall apart, our culture of despotism lies at the heart of it. Despotism is at play when power wielded by the male or female gender is seen as a vehicle with which to lord it over others. 
not to serve or enable those others to discover their capabilities. Our citizens are there to laud us with terms like your excellency and to pad our pension accounts. Hold us to account? Why, that would be treasonable felony. Our workforce are there to add value to us, never mind unpaid salaries and benefits. Our children are portals of our unrealized dreams. How dare they agitate for aspirations of their own after all we've done for them? Our trophy wives are there to cook our favorite meals and make our homes and beds comfortable. For them to expect regular assistance with domestic chores, why else did we marry them? Our ATM husbands are there to ensure that we never lack for anything and to give us social respectability. Woe we'll betide them if they become unemployed or ask for help with meeting financial commitments. Where is the partnership, shared vision, and going the extra mile? Where is the love, trust, and the laying down of our lives? Each of us needs to take a look in the mirror, have a change of heart, and make the necessary adjustments. This way, we will have happy homes, happy workplaces, and a happy society where we serve each other. This way, everybody wins. Well, does everybody win is what I want to ask Please you. Please ask. Sister, me. sister. Mm. Because you know what? I actually agree with you. But I guess the question we need to ask, or everybody needs to ask, is how do people view marriage in this society? Okay. I have to say, oops, another controversial, I'm divorced. And I'm not here selling divorce. But my divorce came about through domestic violence and domestic mm. abuse. And I remember when I ended the marriage in UK that a sister in church came up to me, not knowing anything about the circumstances, and very piously said to me, I lift up the cup, ah, Fala Shade, you know if you were in Nigeria, we'll give you a cup of tea and send you home. To me, that's... Send you home as in... What does that mean? Yeah. She meant that she, if we were in a Nigerian context, the church would have ordered me to go back oh, to my to husband, husband and reconcile. And reconcile. Oh, okay. This was without her knowing any of the history. Now, I'm very clear, I support marriage. I think that a good marriage is the bedrock of society. But again, I ask the question, what is the function of a marriage? You know, I think one of our challenges in our tradition, our culture, well, we've talked about culture today, and there are many positives about our culture, and I love our culture. But I think one negative aspect of our culture is a sense of entitlement. And please, men, do not kill me, but I think many men feel very entitled and they see their women as second-class citizens. That's why they can beat them. That's a fallacious And abuse. No, it is, it is not. the statement. Keep landing it. It, 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 it is not. not. Make it. No, it, 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 it is no, not. No, don't be distracted. No, I said, keep going. I, I refuse to be distracted. No, keep going. That is why <laughs> we have it. We, we, we have it. Wait now, wait now. Let her continue. Continue, dear. <laughs> Even the fact that you're talking over me, sir. Ooh. Makes me feel like you as if you are not men and women. You have brought men and women. <laughs> oh, well, no, but the women are listening. But the women are listening to me. Yes. You may, you may no, please allow her to land. I, I do want her to get to the point. Please, right. sir. I, th I think mm. we have a culture which sadly seems to deem women as second-class citizens, and to be used and abused for the pleasure of men. Should women be able to cook? Well, yes. But do people see marriage as a partnership? I think that our tradition doesn't really view marriage as a partnership. It sees the man as up here and women down there that are there to just meet the needs of the man. And I'll flip it. I'm not just going to say that women are, are exonerated as well. The selfish women who just want men to bankroll their lifestyles. Yes. Yes. And at that point, okay, sir, please, please, please come in. Please come in. I like your topic. I like your topic because you talked about you know, both sides. Mm. Growing yeah. up, my grandfather would plant yam. My grandmother would plant cocoa yam. So that means it was a partnership. We were taught to understand that marriage is a partnership. And even the Western borrowed culture says the man, the woman will stay on the left hand side because the man's responsibility is to protect and provide okay. with the right hand. Okay. Even our traditional belief also. Mm. But you find that that when you have no, a but she clash, should be there now, so you can use the right hand to protect and provide. No, you should be on the left hand. You and use that, the right hand to not, protect and provide. your right hand will reach out now. You, you know, so, <laughs> so you now find that that when you have a mix of these clashes, mm. even in village community, a man who abuses his wife those days will be brought before the palace mm, yeah. and dealt decisively with. Okay. So what were but you saying was fallacious now? That's when she's generalized Please. that our culture. Oh, and we are okay. protecting my culture. Okay. Okay. And, and so 
But these days, when you have a mix of boats, you borrowed from but here, you're saying you borrowed that our culture isn't there. also patriarchal, where the woman... See, you live in a patriarchal world today. Okay. Today, that's, you can't take away. But what we are saying is, like, you ended it. You do your beats, I do my beats, mm -hmm. it will be a happy home. Yes. Just the same way, Sedu talked about, just before the program, he talked about something very unique. If the commitment we have in church, if we translate that commitment to our workplace and the government and you know everything, the country will be a be very better, better place okay. to live in. Okay. So everybody, we must all do our bits. And I like the fact that you know you couldn't take abuse. And I don't encourage any woman to sit down in an abusive marriage. It's not compulsory. I Did love, I know? love, I love what you said. But I'm going to quote what my ex-mother-in-law said to me. May her soul rest in peace. She said to me, Fola Shade, that you are lacking in perseverance. And quote unquote, all men beat their wives. No. Oh no! Can I, can I, please let Ron care come. Okay, no, no. <laughs> okay, no say, just, please go ahead. Let me just quickly yes, say yes, something. Yes. Because Sorry, it seems like We were chairman. saying something earlier. And what you just said, what hit me first is that, you know, you've taken a position, right? And it's because of the way you've interpreted it. Yeah. You remember I said earlier that nothing means anything except the meaning you give you, to, you it. to it. So you have already taken a position that all men are like this. No, I have not taken that position because that, I have a lot of good men around fantastic. me. Fantastic. A lot of good men. Our I have culture, not taken that position. Our culture. The, in fact, when you made the presentation, the thing that came to my head was that African uh, proverb that says when you walk alone, you walk fast. If you walk together, That's you walk right. far, mm -hmm. right? So as a family, as a community, you'd achieve more. It starts from the family, from your marriage, extends to your family, to the community. So definitely in the past, this was how everywhere was, whatever culture it is. Good right? or bad, let's it not was, glorify I mean, yeah, too much. But we learn from mm -hmm. it. What we should do now is look at the, the setbacks there and fine tune it. Mm -hmm. But now we've abandoned everything. We should always pick what is what makes sense in culture. There are some things that we do that don't make any sense. Thank you. And then women also need to, you know, they need to empower themselves. Parents need to empower their girls. Mm. Yeah. Because a lot of people will still send their children abroad and still want them to have the children and sit under the man. They're, not, they're just doing it for the world. They're not actually doing it to empower the girl child. So you, you have your PhD, you have everything, but then you want her to marry so that the man will bankroll her and you come for a mugo. We don't, we, we're not really telling ourselves the truth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's, we're not that's telling ourselves. So the, 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 we buckle under pressure. The minute they're 20, 35, they must marry. No marriage counseling. They just marry any man because they don't want all sorts of things. But not any man, any man that has money. Well, yes, yeah, true. Very, very true. <laughs> so we really need to make sure that what we're telling our girls. What are we telling and them? And our boys. And our, I'm particular about the girls. Okay. Because the girls, the, the girl boys. child. Yeah, the boys, they have their own. But me, today, I want to talk about the girls, the girl child. Because I have a girl. I have a daughter and I know what I tell her. I know the things that I tell her. You must be able to empower that girl so that she's not going to grow up to depend on a man. She must be able to do stuff for herself, not waiting for a man to bankroll her, which wow. is the case we have <laughs> everywhere today. Well, you can see that's a spicy one and maybe we should be doing a part two on it. True change begins with a change of heart. Ronke will be similarly endeavoring to inspire a change in us after the break. You're watching The Advocate on Plus TV Africa. Respect is a two-way street. Hmm. Someone pinched my son. Somebody took something from my daughter. They don't know what they're doing in this school. I'm going to put everything on social media. I will deal with that teacher. And so on and so forth. And I often ask, where is the place of love? A school that 99% of the time delivers the best. And the minute there's a misunderstanding, will kill the ants with the sledgehammer. People of the world, can you remember the case of a parent that was so angry with a teacher? She took a stick to the school and struck the teacher on the head. How many more teachers are going to die because the parent is angry? I can also recollect a time that my daughter was hit in school. She was actually slapped. A school that is highly rated, and yet I have issues with them. Oh yes, I do. Just like we all do with systems. And when I'm angry, do I go to the school gates, screaming, shouting, threatening? No way. I would rather go to see them in the office and discuss the issues rather than create a scene and then consciously or unconsciously destroy the reputation of a school based on something that can be resolved easily. 
there will always be conflicts, some bigger than others. I'm talking about those that can be easily resolved. Don't shoot this messenger. Brothers and sisters fall out, husbands and wives fall out, tongue and teeth literally fight. So why not parents, teachers, and management? We must all exercise a level of emotional, emotional intelligence and realize that some of our actions actually make the children uncomfortable in school. Many pupils actually love their teachers, believe it or not. Many teachers and humans act with a positive intention, no matter how poor the outcome is. So undermining the teachers and speaking unecologically in the presence of children sends a very wrong and strong message to your children. We won't behave like this in other countries. However, many parents are happy to treat those they entrust their children with, like glorified Nigerian nannies, who, by the way, are also treated badly in many cases. The entire system in many cases is becoming increasingly chaotic. Let us stop hating on one another. A trendy 21st century skill is collaboration, which we require in the best interest of the Nigerian child. My people, how markets? You do. <laughs> you do, but I think the issue really is about boundaries, mm -hmm. and I think we've touched on it today. We talked earlier about churches, and we talked about frameworks, even about the borders. And I think you've highlighted something so important, Ron, Can I completely agree with you. I think that there are some elements of our culture which can promote a sense of entitlement, so the person who thinks they are a big man or a big woman. I, 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 I'm looking at it from another angle yeah. mm -hmm. completely because um, I think there is um, like a death. It, children these days have evolved. They're not yeah. kids the way we are. Yeah. So um, teachers have to undergo some sort of training to understand that you know children learn at different you know pace and style. Mm -hmm. Some play and learn. Mm -hmm. Some would you know give you what you want. You know, so you need to understand the different, like they say... Uh, learning styles, yeah. yeah some the, are visual, um, some are kind of aesthetic. aggregated or mm -hmm. segregated learning or whatever. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? We, we will find that most of these teachers are not exposed to this sort of... You have the knowledge, but you don't know how to pass it on. So and you get frustrated sometimes. So, so I'm trying to see the link between that and... Yes, I'm trying to connect it. Advocacy, yeah. because she, yeah. she's yeah. complaining about the way parents are treating teachers. Yes, yeah, so imagine a child that has that difficulty, you know, understanding what you're teaching and you pour out that frustration on the child. Here's a child at home with our own style of teaching. I find the child to be adequately okay. Mm. Learns, play, play learning. Okay. But in school, you have a different... And that means the parent has done something wrong, which is registered the child in a school that doesn't understand your child. So if you, no, no. or, or no. what, no, no. someone let, don't understand say, what let, you're let, saying, I, I think, uh, so that we don't point, digress. Schooling, first and foremost here, is how man go do, okay? Which one is convenient for me? Um, if I, I want to send my children to one of these porch school, but I can't afford it. And so, the one they nearby, let me send them there. And then they get there, you, you, they have a, a way of learning. But because the teacher also is how man go do, ordinarily, if left to him, he wouldn't have been a teacher. But job no day, so I need to teach. And then the, he sees that child as dull. You don't learn. Growing up, you fail mass, you'll be flogged. Mm -hmm. But that was then. But now, you flog that child. You, you, for me, I probably would have been a medical doctor today if, I, 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 if not for the fact that my teacher used to flog us <laughs> in mathematics. For real? Yes. Okay. But for that, I hated the teacher and I hated in mathematics. Okay. Mm -hmm. But today it's different. Mm. So, and, and so also, parents also, I agree with you that if there should be a collaboration. I'm talking about. Yeah, I agree with you. That's why I say I agree with you. There should be a collaboration. Teachers, but where the problem is, some parent also, I attended PTA meeting once and I told myself I will never attend again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> why? We're talking about incrementing fee and I, you know, try to give reasons why it shouldn't be. And then one woman just stood up and like, go to Ikoi, schools are very expensive. Here you should be happy that they're even charging this. And I told her, I said, your husband is in VI, working his head out. Oh. And here you are accumulating bill for him. Uh -oh. And she took offense that day. I just said, you know what? Because I want to avoid scenarios like this, mm. I wouldn't come again. But I would rather go to the school authority, you know, 
ventilate my grievance. So I agree with you. Let me come in. I agree with you on that point. Instead of so sorry, I agree with you. I agree with you on that point. I agree with you on that point that yes, there is need for collaboration. Yes, absolutely. The parents should learn to no matter the issues, meet with the school authority. In the same vein. In the school authority, way, yes, very civil, yeah. In the same names. vein, in the same vein, the school authority also should set up mechanism immediately mm. to address yes, those exactly. challenges. Because it is when you refuse to address them then that some parents will say, I think it's a strong way that, that they understand. So I want to do it the hard okay, way. Okay, let me come in on that, actually. Because I read the story, I think it's in Anambra, mm -hmm. 2017. Yeah. This lady struck the teacher mm -hmm. with a stick, and the teacher died. Mm -hmm. Died? Yeah. Died. Yeah. Because she hit her on the head. Mm -hmm. And by the time they took the teacher to the hospital, she had died. This is a, a woman who came because the teacher had spanked her 14 year old son. Mm -hmm. The, the woman marched in there saying she was going to teach. And even when the principal calmed her down and said, chill. Mm. And she even had agreed to chill. But when she then saw the teacher coming, mm. she got riled up. And she attacked her with so much on the head that this woman died from it. So now the woman was in prison. How does that help the child? Yeah. But I, So clearly, parents need to be brought under control. The fact that you're paying school fees doesn't mean you should treat another human being like less than, you know. Yeah. And definitely, there should be collaboration. But yes. what, where I wanted to also then join, join Libras and Seydou is to say, I think the onus is still on the school to, bri to, to create that bridge because mm -hmm. they're the professionals in the house. So if you're open to, you constantly call your parents, you engage with them, you make them your friend. The teacher, I have a teacher who I love because she always keeps me, she's on WhatsApp. You know, some teachers are clever like that. They'll form WhatsApp groups mm -hmm. for all their parents. They keep you updated about your child's progress. They show you that they have a personal interest in your child. Mm -hmm. There's no way I'm going to go to that school, no matter what I hear. And my reaction is to go and attack her because mm -hmm. she has shown me that she's taking a personal interest well, where in my welfare. But where avenues are there? But some parents want to flex because I am X, Y, Z. You need to educate them the as they're coming in. About, you may have to even bring even in regulations. Home, you can tell from, mm. from the home because when the children come to school, you will know that something is already happening. Yes. That is going, coming at lunchtime. Then you may have to bring so regulations for such what parents. We need, uh, what, I'm, what my message is today is that when there's an issue, can you please, first of all, meet management? Yes. Not scream, Comments not that, shout, to not space social space. media, <laughs> not anything like that. Yeah. The same way you will not embarrass any other person, please don't do it in the school. Yes. They say all good things come to an end. This doesn't have to be the case here, since you will continue where we stopped. So keep your comments coming in on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Till next week, same time, let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem and this and that. One of the reasons why we don't have more women in politics in Nigeria is for as long as political meetings continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, really. It's disastrous for a president to, even say to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy it's was a terrible. Terrible. Like, a terrible, terrible strategy. strategy. Because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and quite frankly, Nigeria has become in a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. Yeah.